So we're going to be talking about drilling holes in stones. It's probably the most common question we get asked. You know, how do I drill a hole to attach a jump ring or a bale or a leather cord? Um, basically, there's several different types of drills you can use. There's, they're all diamond plated. There's twist drills, uh, solid drills, uh, triple ripple drills from crystallite, and uh, hollow core drills. The ones that we're going to demonstrate with are the hollow core drills. They're about the easiest of the ones to use that we've found and the fastest. Uh, as far as machines for drilling the holes, there's a lot of different ways of doing it. You can use a, uh, a rotary tool like a Dremel. You can use a, uh, a hanging motor, uh, like the Fordham hanging motors. Uh, micro motors is another way. Simplest way I've found is just using a, a cheap drill press. Uh, as far as the, the types of stones, you can have a cabochon, it can be a free-form stone, uh, or you can pre-drill the stone before you finish it. Okay, there's a variety of different sizes that are available in these little hollow core drills. You should be able to see that on the larger one, that's a hollow drill. Uh, the most common sizes for bales and leather, two to two and a half mil. They're available from, from one and a half mil through to three mil in half mil increments. After that, they go to larger sizes. But two mil, two and a half mil is a good size for uh, drilling holes in stones. The next thing we do is get your stone and you've got to mark it on both sides with a permanent marker. So you mark one hole and as well as you can mark the corresponding position on the back. It's just a matter of looking at it and lining it up. You could probably also do the same thing with a set of steel calipers and mark it very accurately. I've just never found the need to do that. Okay, once the stone's marked with your permanent marker, it's ready to drill. The important thing is you've got to drill um, from both sides. If you drill straight through, you'll end up with a, a big crater where the drill comes through the stone. Okay, and in the next section we'll actually do some drilling. Okay, so this is a cheap drill press you, you should be able to pick up from your local hardware shop. We've um, modified it with a water feed. This is a normal garden irrigation type tubing and this is a little bit of copper wire fed up the tube to make it stiff so that we can point it directly at the drill bit. Uh, this is one of the diamond drill bits that we we had a look at earlier and this is the stone that we looked at earlier. So we'll uh, we'll start it up and um, turn the water on. You need a good flow. You don't want the drill bit to dry out. If the drill bit dries out at all you'll destroy it very very quickly. If it doesn't dry out, uh, you do this properly, you should get at least 10 to 20 stones out of each drill bit. So start it up. There's the, the hole that's marked. I usually start it at a little bit of an angle until the drill bit bites and then straighten it. And it's just a gentle pressure. I've got a couple of fingers underneath the stone just gently pushing it up. I'll keep taking the stone away to let water get in the hole. You normally do this until you're at least about two thirds of the way through the stone. I'm mean, about halfway at the moment. Very close. That's the hole. Double check to see that that's still aligned. And again, start at an angle. And slowly straighten it. I, I tend to wiggle it a little as I'm going through. And you're going to find out pretty quickly if your hole's lined up. This is fairly quick to stay. Keep 
building. It must be very quiet. That's true. So there's a little bit of variation there, but that's because of the way I marked the hole. This is quite easily cleaned up with a, a V-shaped diamond burr to take those, those sharp edges off that. And we might look at that in another video.